North Korea claims it has tested several weapons, including a nuclear device, and world leaders have not hesitated in condemning the Rogue Nations Act. CBS News correspondent Barry Peterson has the latest. Seven weeks ago, North Korea defied the world by launching a long-range missile. Today's test of a nuclear device and short-range missiles takes defiance to a new level. And it came with tough rhetoric from this nation with a million-person army. The tests are, quote, part of measures to bolster nuclear deterrent for self-defense. President Obama issued a statement saying the North is directly and recklessly challenging the international community. PRT. Japan's prime minister wants the UN to meet today and condemn the North. On the streets of South Korea, nerves were rattled. Do the North Koreans want world peace or not, asked this man. I am heartbroken. North Korea's leader Kim Jong-il is believed to have suffered a stroke last August. Some analysts see today's test as an effort of an ailing man to solidify power so he can install his son as the North's next leader. Barry Peterson, CBS News, Beijing. Joining us now from the Pentagon is the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Admiral Mike Mullen. Good morning, Admiral. Good morning, Harry. Thanks for taking the time to be with us on this Memorial Day, a subject I want to talk about in just a moment or two. But first, can we get some reaction on this apparent test of a, a nuclear test in North Korea and the testing of several, several missiles? Uh, the diligence must continue and the world is an ever dangerous place. Well, I, I think the, the uh, tests that North Korea claims that uh, they have executed just speak to the growing belligerence on the part of, of North Korea, North Korea's leadership, the growing isolation of that country, the growing defiance of uh, international law. Uh, all of those things point to a country that, that uh, I think continues to destabilize uh, that region and actually in the long term, uh, should they continue on to develop a nuclear weapons program pose a significant threat to the United States. How would the White House have called it a grave concern. When you wake up in the morning or when you're alerted in the middle of the night about something like this, the world has no shortage of hot spots these days, it seems. Well, it, it certainly doesn't. And uh, uh, the, the, whether it's the challenges we have uh, with North Korea and, and the ongoing challenges uh, or the challenges we have uh, in Iraq as we, as we uh, come down uh, and, and de uh, withdraw our forces there over the next couple of years and adding forces in Afghanistan, uh, the regional linkage between Afghanistan and Pakistan, uh, the, the growing challenges in, in, that we have in the, in the Middle East, whether it's the development of the Middle East peace process or the or Iran continuing on a path to develop a nuclear weapon. So we certainly have our challenges uh, at a time uh, that uh, they seem to be growing uh, and it's getting tougher and tougher. Mm. Uh, along those lines, as the troops are being drawn down gradually in Iraq and as the troop buildup is uh, ongoing even as we speak in Afghanistan, so many of these folks have been twice are going three times and four times, multiple tours. Does the United States have a fighting force big enough to take care of all of the business at hand? Well, Harry, I believe this is the best fighting force we've ever had. Uh, and, and the most combat hardened, most capable. And if you just look at what uh, our troops uh, were able to do in Iraq to turn around what was clearly uh, a, an effort going in the wrong direction over the last couple of years. And I just give them so much credit. I think we've got a strategy now for Afghanistan uh, that has about the right amount of troops, mm -hmm. uh, not unlike Iraq. We've got to provide security for the Afghan people. That's really the, the center of gravity uh, of the challenge that we have uh, in Afghanistan. And in so doing, we'd be able to start uh, a solid economic development program, mm -hmm. a solid governance program, and make a difference there as well. That said, the troops are really strained. They're pressed very hard, as are their families, and their mm -hmm. sacrifices are, have certainly been uh, remarkable. And speaking of sacrifice on this Memorial Day, a word, if you would, about the hundreds of thousands who have served throughout the decades that have made opportunities available for all of us here in the United States. Well, there's so much of uh, who we are 
as Americans and they make such a difference. And they're dedicated uh, uh, men and women uh, and families uh, unlike I've ever seen. And, and this Memorial Day uh, in particular, we should remember those sacrifices, particularly those who've paid the full measure, the ultimate sacrifice, uh, focus on the families of the fallen throughout our land, uh, and recognize those who are still serving, uh, many of whom are in harm's way today, serving in two wars, uh, and also uh, renew ourselves uh, in terms of dedicating ourselves as a nation to those who make such a difference. Admiral Mullen, thank you so much for your time today, sir. Thanks, Harry. Do appreciate it.